Hello, it's Vinyl Rich here with vinyl video number eight. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but it's really windy outside here in LA County. Um, I'm going to show three records that I showed in my previous video, vinyl video seven, and then I'm going to show some recent finds from about a month ago or whatever. Um, my videos, I don't really script what I'm going to say. I, I mean, I have an idea, but I, and uh, when I go back and I, I do, I'll, I'll watch it before I upload it. There's been already a few times when I had to just delete it and start over, mainly because of the sound. One time it was, it was just too dark and I, I didn't like the way it turned out, but uh, I notice things that I forget or uh, I should have said and uh, that's why I'm going to show these uh, or I, I learned something also since I posted the last one. Well, anyways, I'm going to show uh, this Emmett Rhodes again. What I, uh, after watching the video, I... I didn't uh, really give it. I, I said it was a pop, it has a poppy album, and that really didn't do it justice. This is the first song off of that album with my face on the floor. Um, it's it's a really good album, and uh, it 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 has kind of a. A Paul McCartney revolver error sound to it. At least to me, that's what I, I hear. I hear Paul McCartney in this quite a bit, and uh, I, I like the album. I was, I didn't think I gave it ju did it justice on my previous video, so I, I would show it again. Really good album. Now I'm gonna show this one again. The Chaos UK, Short Shop, Short Sharp Shop. It was pointed out to me that, hey, did you notice this is uh, really similar to the Michelle Shock album? And it's titled Short Sharp Shock. And I don't know, I mean, I, I, I had heard of Michelle Shock, but I was not unaware of her album. And uh, I looked it up and I, gee, my knee, it's almost identical. And it's a picture, this album came out in 84. Michelle Shock's album came out in 88. Yet the photo on her 88 album is a photo taken from 1984 of her getting arrested at the Democratic Convention. And uh, the, it, it's amazing, the two covers, the similarities. And the other coincidence is the day I showed this and uploaded this video, uh, Flipside CT, he showed the Michelle Shock the album, and I, I, that's when I saw it. And I go, man, it, it's pretty weird. The next one that I showed last time was Conflict. As I said before, this came out in '86. It was their third album. And I, I had stated that uh, their f the best songs from the first album are better than the best songs on this, but overall this is a better album. Well, I re-listened to their first album, which is one I already had, Conflict. What is it? It's Time to See Who's Who. And uh, I re-listened to this one, and to me this one is better hands down. It's a much better. has all the lyrics on the inside. You know, this is a really, really good album. Okay, now uh, on to new records I haven't shown. This is one that was shown by uh, the Metal Theologian, Cain and Abel. It's a funky... He did a video of uh, kind of funk bands for rockers, I guess you would call it. And I, I've always liked funk music. And uh, this one kind of caught my eye. Oh, what's going on here? And uh, it, it's good. It, it, 
the only drawback is some of the horn arrangements, but at least they're not super loud. And but I like this album really good. Um, it's on a. It, this is a reissue. It's on a really plain yellow label. It's. I don't even see the name of the company on here. AKT Records. Okay, next I got one, two, three, five soundtracks that I had bought in, in the last month or so, probably the last couple of months. First one I'm going to show is uh, Tower Records, Riot on Sunset Strip. It's got two songs by the Standells and two by the Chocolate uh, Watch Band. Um, both recorded live those songs are and the, the the one song by the chocolate watch band it's really good sitting there standing it's really really good and those songs like the album is overall is kind of uneven it, I mean for the price I paid I mean I didn't pay much for this it's on uh, Tower Records and uh, I got it. I mean, a chocolate watch band record, they, they go for ridiculous amounts. And I'm not going to pay what they're asking for them. And I figured this is a cheap way to get some, you know, 60s music. It's got some other stuff on here. Uh, the Mug Wumps, the Sidewalk Sounds, Deborah Travis. And I think these are just studio musicians. Uh, Tower Records were famous for, you know, scoring B movies. The next one is the Volume 2, The Wild Angels. Another one on Tower Records, another B movie. This is basically Davy Allen and the Arrows. I think it's all instrumental. No, oh, there's a vocal here, Blues Theme, which was a Davy Allen and the Arrows uh, song that actually charted. But on this, this is a vocal version of it. And again, that's on Tower Records. Yeah. And uh, I got both of those for, I believe, I don't remember exactly, in the $10 range. Now here's one I got for $0.99. Cents. I bid on it. I was the only one that bid on it. And I mean, for $0.99, cents, I guess you can't complain. And it's wild in the streets. It's, I mean... The movie seems like it would be pretty good. It's a B movie. It's got Christopher Jones. It's got Richard Pryor, Ed Beasley, Shelley Winters, Hal Holbrook. But this is a really early uh, Richard Pryor. Anyways, it said it was in excellent shape. It said the jacket was in excellent shape. And it said the record was in excellent shape. I don't know if you can see it here, but there's creases all the way. You can see it up here, good. All the way up and down. So right there, I wouldn't call the album cover great. It, it is a gatefold. Let me see if I can get... But this particular copy is a trifold. I mean, it's just all unglued. It's, and uh, the record, I'm not going to show it, but... The record is not, it's in good condition at best. It's, it's, and I, I, I wrote the, the seller and told him, you know, hey, the record you just, you know, sold me was, is not excellent. And he goes, well, you know, send it back and you get your money back. I mean, it was 99 cents and the shipping was $3.75. It's, it's not worth my while. I'm not going to bother. Um, I got, Two more soundtracks. These are more uh, recent, 80s, I believe, both of them. This one here is Repo Man. This is, a, if you haven't seen this movie, it's pretty good. It's got Emilio Esteban in it. His name's Otto. And uh, it's got a, a song by, by Iggy Pop that I didn't have called Repo Man. I, I, I presume it's for this uh, movie. It's got a Burning Sensations song that I didn't have. 
three plug songs that I didn't have. The Juicy Bananas, I never heard of them. And then it's got Black Flag, Circle Jerks, Suicidal Tendencies, and uh, songs that I already had. But th this also, I think it was nine dollars. Or and, uh, the, the album is in excellent shape. I would say the the covers and very good plus. And it's uh, on San Andreas Records. It's got a custom label. Uh, it's got a hand coming out of the ground with the record. It's a good album. It's a really good movie too. It's cool. Another really good movie. Punk rock movie. Suburbia. This is a good movie. This is a... Uh, I don't know if anybody is familiar with The Decline of Western Civilization. That was Penelope Spears' first movie. This was her second. And, uh... The side one is live side. The three bands performed in the in the movie. Uh, Di performs. Richard hung himself. It's a live version. TSOL has Wash Away and Darker My Love, two live versions. And the Vandals have Legend of Pat Brown, and uh, they're all live versions that are in the movie. And then the side two is uh, Alex Gibson, his soundtrack. Uh, he Alex Gibson was uh, in a band called uh, B People, really good band, and uh, this is a good soundtrack. It's a good album. Um, it was a lot of it. This is the garage. What is it called? The garage raids. When they go around cruising, looking for garages that have the door open, they go on take food out of the refrigerators or whatever um, but a lot of this was filmed like about a mile from my house where the 105 freeway is now they had uh, the, the federal government bought up all these houses from from Norwalk Downey all the way to the airport and uh, they, they these houses stayed vacant for uh, years more than a decade, and uh, like it, the wild, the wild dogs of Downey. You know, it, 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 the, the house that these guys squat in is about a mile from where I used to live in Downey. And uh, this is on Enigma, the regular Enigma label, and uh, it's a good album. Now with that album. I also got this one, Sick of It All. This was under ten dollars. Say it was ten dollars. I haven't heard this album yet. Um, it was a later album than I had realized. I, but uh, the album cover looked pretty cool to me, and a uh, custom sleeve with the same kind of design on it. So I'll give it a spin, see what it sounds like. And, uh, it's got the insert with the same design and the, the, the lyrics on the other side. Now, I ordered the Suburbia and the Sick of It All album from the seller. And to my surprise, he threw in this album, Crime Desire. You can't really see the cover. It's all black on black. And it's got like an Obi strip on here. And this, I, I like this album a lot. I mean, this is, I, after I got this, I, I never heard of this band. It's a punk band from San Diego, I think, I read online. And I listened to some of their songs and... I might get more of this band. Unfortunately, I think they broke up around 2007 or so. This is the... Yeah, this is the original sleeve. It's got a picture on there. You can barely make it out. Some trees. Really dark. And some lyrics. It's like gray on black. I and mean, it's hard to make out. And uh, custom label. Crime Desire. I uh, I recommend them. I, I, I like them. 
for a, a newer punk band, I, I do like it. Let's go to this one. Here's a, a, a record I got. I bought this online. No effects. I showed one of their singles that I had. And, uh, so I thought I'd, I'll give this a try. It was like 10, 12, I think it was $12 maybe. And I, I probably bought it with some something else too, but I don't remember what. Um, this is pedestrian punk. This nothing on it really. I I don't know. It's okay. It's kind of like a generic generic punk. Let's put it that way. There's the label, custom label. I like the Crime Desire better myself. This is a record I bought at a. Uh, the Record Jungle, my local record store. And it's a band. This is still sealed. I haven't opened it. Despite the destroyers, the destroyers will be destroyed. And it's just a black album with this logo and the writing on the bottom. And this is the back side. Um, I listened to some of their songs. Uh, on YouTube, and it's not really my style. It's I. The first thing that caught my ear was the the uh, the guitars are really good. I mean, it's a lot of guitars, and then when I watch some of their videos live, they have three guitar players, you know. So that's why that that part I liked. The vocals, though, I don't know what kind of. I don't. I'm not sure what style of music you call this, but it's that. Singing where they're, I don't know if it's heavy metal. I guess it's those heavy metal music that came out later. And I, I, I'm not sure what what they call that, but I don't really like it. And that's what this is. And I don't know. I don't know if I'll open it or not. Oh, and oh, here's the. This is the insert for the No FX. And that leaves me with this last band I'm going to talk about. I have. I believe they only came out with two albums. Leftover Crack. Mediocre Generica. This is their first album. This one is uh, still sealed. I have this on CD, so I haven't opened this yet. This is... This is... I mean, I can't... I don't listen to a lot of new bands like I used to. So I, I can't really say, you know, if this is the best band out there. But this is the best punk band I've heard in years. Um, they have s hardcore songs. And then the, they'll have ska or reggae type songs. And, I mean, you have bands like uh, the Bad Brains. They, they I saw the Bad Brains in concert and they would do three really hardcore songs and then they would do a reggae song and it it just broke up the momentum of the show and to be honest their reggae songs are subpar and uh then you have uh rancid maybe their ska reggae songs are better than the punk songs you know and this band is the one band that put the two together i think better than any other band i've ever heard in my life i mean and They'll have both styles in the same song. And uh, in the punk rock tradition, the name is great. Leftover Crack, that is a great name. I mean, there's no such thing as Leftover Crack, buddy. You know, I mean, that that's hilarious. And uh, their second album, now this is where it gets a little touchy with some people, I would think. This is their second album, it's called Fuck world trade uh, let's see it's got a picture of the twin towers there burning with uh, Bush the mayor Giovanni or whatever his name is and I'm not sure this is probably the governor of New York I mean that's pretty inflammatory controversial but uh, I mean I don't want to get into politics but the world, the world, free trade in this whole world trade 
on all these trade agreements. They they don't help me help the common man out. Let me put it that way. And this is the label. It's on alternative tentacles. Uh, there you go. There you can see it. I'm not sure what if the other one's on alternative tentacles. No, it's not. I didn't think it was. It's Hellcat Records. And this is the insert. And uh, Leftover Crack, I, I, I was really impressed with them. Um, like I said, I don't know how original their sound is, but to me, they're, it's one of the best punk bands I've, I've heard. And uh, I'm sure there's other bands out there that I'm not aware of. I don't go to shows like I used to. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're, there's probably a lot of music out there that a guy my age is missing on. I mean, definitely the radio. They never played this kind of music on the radio anyway. So, But anyways, that's it, guys and gals. Take care.